You, the coronavirus pandemic has really taken a toll on all of us, but no one more than hospital workers who are fatigued and frankly reaching their limits. And it's not just doctors and nurses on the COVID floors. Our Lauren Costick tonight shares how the pandemic is affecting almost every hospital department. At the beginning of the pandemic, it didn't matter what department you worked in. The virus meant all hands on deck. I didn't really know what I was getting myself into when I started, but it was just, I don't know. I came home and told my husband, I was like, it literally looks like something from a movie. In early March, Megan McWhorter worked with COVID-19 patients at IU West. It was just insane the amount of PPE that people were wearing just to keep themselves safe, mostly because we just really didn't know much about COVID at that point in time. After two months, IU Health switched her back to the breast cancer department. Even though she wasn't working with COVID-19 patients, the pandemic still had a large effect on her department. They're already super upset because they have a life-changing diagnosis and then on top of it, we're in a pandemic. With visitor restrictions, many families can't be there for each step of the journey. They have the support at home, which is great, but going through the treatments and things, that's kind of difficult for them. With these cases being emotional, McWhorter tries to comfort her patients, which is another challenge with masks and social distancing. I don't want to say I'm a hugger, but I do like to hug the patients when they find out that they have cancer when they come and see us, and I can't do that now. Hospitals and workers like McWhorter are feeling the strain and, frankly, are emotionally tired. I mean, I, I'm a pretty strong person, so I think I can, I'm handling it okay, but there's just some days where you do just kind of, like, break down in tears sometimes. With hospitalization and case numbers going up, it can be hard to find the light at the end of the tunnel. But McWhorter says her family helps get her through. And now let's take a look at the impact coronavirus is having right now here in Indiana. State health leaders are reporting 34 more deaths. Over the past few weeks, we've been averaging around 60 deaths a day. 6,500 new cases of COVID-19 were confirmed in Indiana. And take a look at this chart. You can really see how cases spiked in November, that large bar with more than 162,000. And so far in the first six days of December, we've already had more than 37,000 cases. Nationwide, we've had more than a million new cases of coronavirus just in the past five days. Now, for some perspective, after the first cases were confirmed, it took the country almost 100 days to reach a million. Meredith Woods reports tonight on the concern that we haven't even seen the worst of it yet. One million new COVID-19 cases reported in the U.S. in just the past five days. That's according to the latest data from Johns Hopkins University. This pandemic is ravaging the country. We all need to take our precaution. This comes as the U.S. prepares to begin distributing two coronavirus vaccines, which are expected to get an emergency use authorization from the FDA this month. And the White House vaccine chief says in order for life to begin to return to normal, Americans must do their part. There is light at the end of the tunnel, but we will not all have the vaccine in our arms before May or June, so we need to be very cautious and vigilant. The total of confirmed COVID-19 cases in the U.S. stands at 14.5 million, with more than 281,000 deaths from the virus. And experts fear those numbers could rise even further. The gatherings that we saw in Thanksgiving will lead to a surge. It will happen this week and next week, and we cannot go into the holiday season, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, with this same kind of attitude that those, those gatherings don't apply to me. They apply to everybody. According to the COVID tracking project, more than 100,000 COVID-19 patients have been hospitalized nationwide for the past four days. In California, some 33 million people will be under a stay-at-home order beginning Sunday night. That's after ICU bed capacity dipped below the 15% threshold set by Governor Gavin Newsom. I'm Meredith Wood reporting.